we will solve a simple problem of oscillations involving moments of inertia. So oscillations and moment of inertia. Before uh, start uh, discussing the problem, let me just consider a disk on which a shape is mounted, let's say in the form of a triangle. So if you look from the side, it's like this. Okay. Uh, so we are looking. Uh, if we look from the top, like this, we will see a circle and, uh, and this triangle. And let me just paint uh, one corner uh, red and label it A. So as this thing, as the big disk rotates by omega, so it's going by omega, and uh, here is the uh, second axis. Now it depends uh, on the interaction between the axis and this object. If there is no, uh, if it cannot apply a torque uh, onto the, uh, uh, this object, then this object will not rotate about its axis. So when it is free to rotate about this axis, and this axis is G2, this is G1, okay? When it's free to rotate about this axis G2, it's free means axis is not applying a torque to it. So as the disc rotates, so this is the position one, as the disc rotates, comes to here, uh, we again have A, as the disc comes to here, is the second position, third position, A, where we uh, look, this is the fourth, A, four. And then back to the same position again. Now what happened? Disc rotated once about its uh, axis. That means this, uh, the central mass we assume this uh, G2 passes through the central mass of this object. So the central mass of this object moved together with the disk once about the circle. But uh, the uh, triangle or this object did not rotate about its axis. So it's really the motion of the central mass, the circular motion of the central mass. So the moment of inertia uh, inertia that this uh, triangular object presents to the disk is simply, if this distance is r, is m r square. However, if it is locked, so this is uh, object, let's say, object, object free to rotate about G2. G2 is this axis. If it's locked, object locked, so the same thing uh, this time it will be like uh, this form. It was, let's see, Let's call this time, this is A, now it is A, this is the first, second, position, third, A, four, A, uh, four, and back again. Now what happened? Central mass rotated once, but also the object itself rotated about 
the axis G2 once. Okay. So the if we call the moment of inertia of this object, let's say IO, it is the rotational inertia of this object about this axis, so that this inertia is now, since the central mass has the inertia mr squared plus IO. Okay. So if you write the angular momentum of, uh, of this object is L is I omega, I with mr square here, again L I omega with I this time. This is free when the uh, object is free to rotate about its axis and uh, this is when uh, the G2 axis is locked in to this object. We may ask a question uh, like this. Uh, question. Suppose uh, this is the disk and here it is uh, our This is rotating about, it is free to rotate, free to rotate. And it is rotating with omega prime about the G2 axis. And this is going about rotating with angular velocity omega. So what's the angular momentum of this object with respect to this axis? Then L delta. Central mass is m r square omega. But this is now going with uh, independently IO omega prime plus IO omega prime. So when uh, locked in position is uh, when omega prime is equal to omega. Okay, we shall use this in the problem that follows. I'm racing. Here there's a rope, and at the end of the rope there's a symmetrical object. It can be a wheel, cylinder, whatnot. This length of the rope is L. This has the uh, uh, parameters mass m, radius r, and uh, rotational inertia IO to rotate about its symmetry axis. We will now study the oscillations of this symmetrical object uh, as a pendulum uh, for two cases. In the first one, it is free to rotate about its axis, symmetry axis. In the second case, it's locked. So, uh, the first one, free to rotate. So when it's free to rotate, if you let it go from here, and I just uh, paint uh, one point here by red. A indicates that red point. And when it swings down, it is here. And when it swings up, it is here. Because uh, nobody applies a torque about this symmetry axis. So let us study the uh, oscillation uh, dynamically. We shall use the rotational equivalent of F equals ma. So here is the uh, this is L. There is the gravitational force down. There is uh, isolate the body. Here is the central mass. Uh, here is the tension, and there is the mg down. And uh, it will move, uh, staying always perpendicular uh, to this uh, radius. So tension does not uh, do any work. But uh, if we just so this is the component of 
So this is pi over 2 minus theta. So uh, minus mg cosine pi over 2 minus theta times L. That's the torque. Uh, this is sine theta. And I again approximate sine theta for small oscillations by theta. And this minus sign indicates that uh, force is, if theta is increasing, the force is trying to decrease uh, theta. Namely, it's a restoring force. It's the restoring force is responsible for the oscillations. This is equal to the moment of inertia, uh, I, times alpha. Alpha is the second derivative of this angle. Let me call theta dot. So it is I theta dot. So uh, what is I for this case? It is free to rotate. So there is no rotation about the central mass. It's only the rotation of the central mass about this point P. So it is ML square. So theta dot, if I divide by ML square, and take this one to the, to the right, plus uh, ML cancel, plus G over L theta is equal to zero. If you wish, I can call it omega zero square. And the solutions of this uh, equation is simple. This uh, theta is equal to a cosine omega zero t plus b sine omega zero t, where a and b are to be determined from the initial conditions, initial position at time equal zero and the initial velocity. Okay. So omega zero is root g over f, which is just two pi f zero. So F0, the frequency is 1 over 2 pi root g over L, and T0, the period, is 1 over F0, that's equal to 2 pi root L over G. All right, the second one. In the second one, I don't need to erase many things, only one thing. Instead of uh, here, instead of I ml square, I will change it. So let me just, I can find the eraser. Locked. Locked means So, for example, if this was A, this is now A, and this is now A, not only uh, the central mass is uh, oscillating and rotating about the point P, but the uh, symmetrical object is rotating about its own symmetry axis with the same frequency. So that means instead of ML uh, square, here I erase for this case, it goes to ML square plus IO. Okay. So, of course, omega zero square will change. Let me just write that equation. Theta dot plus M. Uh, plus mgl over ml square plus io theta is equal to zero. This is omega zero square. Theta is again has the solution, but of course omega zero is now not this one, but it has changed. So we bring it here. It's here. Omega zero is root 
MGL or Score Plus IO. And if I divide by MF, that's G over L plus I over MF or root G over L, 1 over 1 plus I over ML square. So uh, omega 0 locked is equal to omega 0 free to rotate times 1 over root 1 plus I over ML square. That is, uh, when it is locked in, its frequency is smaller. So uh, T0 locked in is larger than T0 free to rotate. So the frequency is larger when it's free, uh, whereas the period is larger when it is locked in. All right.